Greetings and welcome to Nantucket. I'm Catherine of Sky, and I am intrigued by this game. The uh, publisher Fish Eagle sent me a key to this game and I am really thrilled to play it. So thank you very much to Fish Eagle, uh, the publisher and the developer Picaresque Studio for that opportunity. Uh, this is a, um, a naval seafaring strategy game which takes place kind of in the days of Herman Melville's Moby Dick. And we are going to be a survivor off of the ship. Now, I have not played this game at all. I've not even clicked the new game button. I've just looked at the options to change the volume levels for the recording. So this is going to be a completely blind playthrough. And I'm really excited to see how this goes on. Now, this game is going to be available on January 18th. Um, so watch for it then. Um, in the meantime, I have linked the Steam page in the uh, description below. So let's start a new game. All right, here's character creation. Captain, we could be Ishmael. Uh, that sounds good, considering we can't change our portrait to <laughs> a feminine character. Uh, let's see what we have here. Looks like we have skills. We have one point left to spend, it says. Let's look at hunting. Hunters are men without fear, born to chase their prey. They can stand, um, they stand, can stand on a whaleboat's bow, sailing toward danger or face the wickedest pirate without hesitation. Uh, sailing. Sailors are valiant explorers who spend their lives at sea. No matter is a majestic vessel, a whaleboat, or a simple board, they know how to keep it afloat come rain or shine. That sounds like a really useful to ha uh, skill to have. Science. Uh, scientists are investigators of the natural... Whoopsies. Pardon me. My mouse cut moves. It's shifting my mouse. Uh, their curiosity and competence can unlock unknown knowledge about the sea and above all, save lives on your ship. I wonder if that's also like doctoring kind of a thing. Crafting. Craftsmen are expert artisans specialized in dealing with all the practical errands of a ship. Their hands are surely the dirtiest and most useful at sea. Now that could be really good at keeping our boat afloat, like if we have damage, I imagine. Um, man, choose your trait. We, we could have a trait too. Smart could be strong, old sea dog. What's this one? Healthy, open-minded. Let's click. Okay. One point to spend in attributes, plus two damage in combat against sea creatures. That sounds good. Um, plus 50% HP regained during navigation. That sounds like a huge buff. Plus one HP per level plus one XP gained per day of navigation. I have no idea what is gonna benefit us most. This damage against sea creatures sounds pretty good because as, as I understand it from reading the description of this game, we are going to be up against lots of sea creatures, possibly pirates, possibly other things. Let's go get this, we'll be strong. All right, do we want hunting, sailing, science, or crafting? Who? I think I want crafting. I used to be craftsman and I, I, I believe in crafting. <laughs> it's good. Now there's an option here, Sea Dog. What is that? You can save only by quitting the game. Okay, so that's kind of like hardcore mode. Tutorial, yes please, play. All right, there are several ways to hire crew members in the tavern. Use the hire fire buttons to exchange and you didn't let me finish, meow. Okay, there's a paper, oh, wow, I love the graphics. This looks awesome. Welcome to Nantucket. Nantucket, take out your map and look at it. See how it stands there, way offshore, lonelier than the Eddystone Lighthouse. Welcome to Nantucket. This tutorial will introduce you to the core features of the game. Follow the instructions in the panel below in order to proceed or press exit tutorial to end this tutorial. All right, after speaking with Captain Bildad and Pegle or Peleg, you get a job on the whaling ship Pequod under her captain Ahab. Your friend Queequeg at the tavern and you got him a chance of shipping out with you. He told you that he's killed more whales than you can count. Meet him at the tavern. Okay, we need to enter the tavern, so we'll click this. 
The tavern is the place where all the mariners come for a drink. It is the best place to find new crew members. Crew members are divided into five classes according to their key attribute. Sailors, hunters, craftsmen, science, scientists, and cabin boys. You can hire and train to any other class. Find Quake Quake by selecting the hunters tab. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, all right. Quake Quake by selecting a character, you can check his stats. You do not have to pay to hire a crew member. According to his class and level, each character will take part of your future incomes uh, lay. The only limits are represented by the maximum crew capacity of your ship and your actual prestige. The price in prestige of each crew member is equal to his level. Okay, so he's level five and we have, our captain's prestige is 63. I guess I'm the captain. And our men are taking up 16 of that prestige. So he's a swimmer. Oh, that's cool. His skills are, he's a pain master. All the attacks against sea creatures make the target bleed. Nice. Um, unlock fasten dice side during combat. No idea what that is. HP 50 of 25. <laughs> Holy fuzzy cats. Oh man. All right. Base lay is 6%. So I'm guessing that means he gets 6% of our takings, possibly. All right, so that's fine. I guess we'll hire him, right? Hire, okay, hire, let's go. Okay, so here we have a number of people here. Great. The shipwright. Bildad asks you to reach the master shipwright's office and order some improved harpoons. At the shipwrights, you can buy new ships, repair your current one, or access the shipwright workshop where you can improve your ship's components or compartments. Okay. All right, this is the Pequod. Ships are divided into three categories, small, medium, and big, according to the number of masts. Bigger ships can be equipped with more whale boats and carry more men because they have more compartments available. By using this interface, you can also upgrade your technologies, improving your ship and allowing you to access better ships. Upgrade the harpoons as requested by Bildad. Okay, look at what we got here. Hammocks, okay. We've got sails, shelving. Okay, I guess we can only click this thing for now. Okay, unlocks harpoons compartment, upgradable. Uh, research, okay, so we have poor harpoons with six damage, so we're gonna get standard, which have eight damage. All right, there we go. Researching ends September 29th. Okay, next. On your way back to the tavern, you meet Peleg. He is in a hurry to complete the preparation to weigh anchor and passes you a shopping list, pointing you toward the merchant's shop. You can find all the resources you will need to survive your seafaring adventures at the merchant's shop. Food, water, wood, and grog. All right. You can now buy all the supplies needed for travel. Water, food, and grog are fundamental items needed to keep you and your crew alive and happy during your travels, while the wood is fundamental to repairing your ship and whale boats. Always remember to leave some space in your ship's hold for whale oil and blubber. You're going on a hunt, not a cruise. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so we need to buy 20 water barrels. Okay. Okay, there's 20. Okay, and we're buying, what are we buying? Food, 10 food barrels. Grog, three. And wood, five. Okay, wow, lots of money. Okay, next. Now you're ready to set sail on the Pequod. Before reaching the ship, you stop to buy a newspaper, knowing it will take months before you will get fresh news again. The newspaper contains news from all over the real world and information you can use during your travels. Okay. Apart from world news and pirate activity reports, the newspaper contains a jobs page where you can find errands to complete in order to increase your prestige and fill your pockets. Check the jobs page. Maybe you can find something useful to report to Captain Ahab. British forces defeat Bahi Rao II and take control of the Maratha Empire. This is 1818. British Admiral John Ross sets sail in search of the Northwest Passage. Yeah, that's an interesting journey. Uh, Explorer Giovanni Bolzoni explores interior of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Wow. 
All right, we're supposed to discover a new whaling area. Various exploration ships have reported the presence of large quantities of whalers in Baffin Bay. It could become a new hunting area. It's eight days away. We'll accept this because it's blinking at me. <laughs> we'll get plus 200 money. Sounds good. All right, we'll go next. You are finally ready to join the rest of the Pequod's crew and set sail. You did not meet Captain Ahab, but you're sure he's going to teach you a lot about life at sea. And with Queequeg covering your back, you are sure nothing you can go wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, how do we set sail? I do not know. Oh, here we go. Sail away. Right. Uh, are you a sailor or a hunter? Assign working skill points according to your captaincy. Skills and special objects are fundamental to improve your statistics during the game. It's good to know. We shall see. I'm not even sure what city we're in. Good lord. Right. Uh, crew arrangement. While you're working to release the sails, the Pequod's first mate, Starbuck, approaches you, ordering you to tell Flask to come to the deck and wait at the steering wheel for Captain Ahab's command. Open the ship management interface to interact with the crew. Okay. Expand. Oh, there we go. Hello. So the ship management interface can be used to assign crew members to specific tasks and check the general status of the ship and her men. Every compartment has a specific effect and takes advantage of a single working attribute. You can move the characters directly by using the ship's blueprint or taking them from the list below. Okay, since I don't know who is each uh, thing, I'm just going to grab them from here. So we need to put flask in the quarter deck slot. That's the quarter deck, and this is the flask, right? No. This is quarter deck. Right. I'm going to shove you there. Okay, good. What are these slots? Let's look. No bonus available. It's a cannon. Okay. Forecastle. Plus one HP per day to man inside. Same thing here. This is a hold, right? Plus one hold points per day and cargo space. Ooh, caboose two morale to crew members. <laughs> wow. Captain's cabin plus four percent profit from selling oil and blubber. This is converting, okay. The blubber to oil. That's good. So we have our own processing center for that. Here's our harpoons. Obviously we did not get the bonus for that just yet. Plus two HP per day to men in sick bay. Okay, and these are this is also sick bay, right? Okay, interesting. Right, I have no idea what all this means. This is very overwhelming, I think. Okay, so here's our Pequod. It's a large clipper ship, uh, standard quality. Okay, so going 13.7 knots. All right, we get some bonuses here and there for stuff. That's good. All right, we have uh, pretty decent morale, except for fleece. Okay, 10 max crew, great. Navigation. Navigation requires both planning and on-the-fly responses to the sea dangers. The winds rose below, the wind rose below you shows how the wind is blowing at the moment and the directions in to take in order to sail windward, right? The filter above allows you to check the global wind patterns meaning the most common wind patterns of specific sea areas. Okay, so we need to open the global wind pattern. Oh, that's cool. So it shows us which directions the prevailing winds are. Okay, you can now inform Captain Ahab about the sightings you have read about in Nantucket. Open the quest interface by clicking on the right filter and then select the mission you're interested in. So that's this thing. The interface allows you to easily find the destination to complete it. Okay. All right, various ships have reported the presence of large quantities of whales in Baffin Bay. Go to quest. Oh, there we go. It's like pinned there. I noticed that tail pinned. Okay, uh, Captain Ahab was eager to have a chance to test his crew and ordered them to set sail in the directions of the sightings. You can select a destination by clicking with the right mouse button on a point on the map, then pressing play to confirm. If you hold the shift key while setting the route, it will add points to the current one. Okay, and you can explore the map by going with the left. Okay, it's not letting me click with the left. 
I think we just need to click with the right. I think this is going to be okay just to go straight there. We don't need to have multiple points since the prevailing winds are going to take us there anyway. Okay, confirm destination by click and play. All right, while navigating, check the area surrounding your ship to avoid dangers such as adverse weather or uh, pirate ships and keep your resources under control to avoid troubles at sea. Food and water keep the crew alive. Grog makes men happy and wood repairs your ship. <clears throat> okay, it's going at 3x speed. I love the graphics in this game. This is so cool looking. Oh, what do we have? Oh my god, there's stuff to happen, happening here. Um, while navigating, you will have to deal with events that are triggered by your choices and current status of your men and ship. Your choices can have huge consequences affecting the crew and shaping your character growth. Captain Ahab walks out of his cabin, shouting orders to Starbuck. His wooden leg echoes like a war drum on the deck. As he reaches you, he stops watching you work. Hey, kid, you clearly have no idea how to scrub a deck. Do you know at least why you are here? Let's see. I want to learn how to kill whales. I want to make a lot of money. I want to see the world. I want to become a great captain. Oh, and it tells you what happens. Open-minded, greedy strong trait added. I want... I forgot what open-minded does. But I want to become a great captain. Okay. You will learn from the greatest then, cries Ahab as he walks away from you. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Can I look at my character? Okay, four days left. Let's pause. Can I click on my character? Click for further info. Maybe I, we're just in the tutorial. Okay. We'll click on it later. There we go. No prevailing wind. Okay, maybe... I don't know if it was because we're off the arrows or just in that area. The lookout spots a creature blowing in the distance, and the whaleboat sent by Captain Ahab confirms that this is the place you were looking for. Ahab sends Stubb to help and orders Starbuck to lower another whaleboat. Starbuck tells you to pick a harpooner and join them. Oh god, okay. The deployment interface helps you fill your whaleboats with men for the hunt. Every whaleboat works as a single unit, and each character gives to it his own skill and available commands, represented by the sides of their combat dice. Check Queequeg's profile by clicking on it. Okay, we know he's really good. Okay, next. You can assign a character to the whaleboat by dropping him in it. There is no need to fill all your whaleboats. More men mean more chances to win a fight. But then it just says there's no need to fill all your whale boats. But more men mean more chances to win a fight. So it's advantageous, it seems, to have more men. Put Queequeg in a whale boat, then press the start button to begin the fight and help Stub. Assign. All right, so we have protective maneuvers, and he's, he's got all these strikes. But I also have the skill to remember that skill that I got for sea creatures. I wonder if that applies or not. All right, what do we got? A narwhal. Right. Stubb has been fighting fiercely against the creature, but his whaleboat is in big trouble now. All the men are overboard, as you can see from their status bar. Oh my god, they're like, they're in the water. This is bad. The creature profile tells you that his special ability always in play and its current health points. As you can see, it is heavily wounded. Right. A fight is composed of consecutive turns, during which each participant plays a card, offensive or defensive, and each whale boat plays a single command among the ones available after the dice are rolled. In order to roll the dice, press the roll button. Oh my god. Right. We're rolling. Right. All right, the creature threatens Stubb's whaleboat. Starbuck decides to move in to help, moving the whaleboat into the creature's line of attack. Use the evasive maneuver command to remove the creature's attack by selecting the command with the left mouse button and then the enemy's card. So we select this and then shoot it with this. Okay. R round two, what? Okay, Stubb is safe. He and his men with him climb back into their whaleboat. 
The creature now moves in your direction. Starbuck decides to stand and finish it. All the characters can throw offensive dice apart from their class one. Select the Starbucks hunting dice, then roll the dice. We need... Uh, okay, hunting side here. I guess hunting... Okay, roll. Alright. Queequeg steps to the whaleboat's bow and aims at the charging creature, waiting for Starbucks' command. Attack steal direct damage to the enemies. Harpoon damage is related to a character's hunting attribute, the quality of the harpoon, and some traits. Hit the creature. Okay, select the strike command, and we'll go straight toward the... Whoa, there we go. And it's dead. Boom. Alright, the creature lays motionless, killed by Queequeg's iron. Hunting whales and completing quests is your primary source of experience points and valuable resources. At the end of each fight, you can access the loot interface. Victory! The day is ours. The waters cease churning and return to normal. You raise your arm and the victory cries of your men surround you. God, that must be terrifying in real life. Okay, the post-combat in interface is divided into two panels. The left panel shows the changes in your crew's experience points. Wow, we got a lot of XP. Um, and morale. So we also got morale for, for defeating this whale, uh, informing you uh, if someone levels up. The right panel shows your loot. Use the buttons to load the blubber and meat on the Pequod, then go back to the ship. All right, there we go. Let's go take it all. So we get blubber and food. Great. So we can actually replenish our food this way. That's fantastic. Okay. Sailing across the ocean, you may discover whaling areas, spots in the ocean where specific types of whales go to feed or mate. Every area is active for three months out of the year. And during this time window, you will be able to use it as a hunting ground to collect precious blubber to sell. You can show hide the discovered whaling areas and migration routes using the whaling areas filter on the top left corner of the screen. By highlighting an area or a migration route segment, you will be able to check the time frame in which it is active. Oh, so I'm hoping that keeps it keeps track for us kind of thing. We've now learned the game's basic mechanics. By bringing your mouse cursor over the interface's elements, you can access tooltips that will help you during your adventures. Now go back to the main cap main deck. Captain Ahab wants to speak to everyone. Drinky harpooners, drink and swear, ye men that man the deathful whale boat's bow. Death to Moby Dick. God hunt us all if we do not hunt Moby Dick to his death. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. I was cursed, twice, by the Lord for my blasphemous promise to hunt Moby Dick, and by Ahab for surviving the Pequod and its sons swallowed by the sea. I was craving to conquer my spot in heaven by striking my iron in Moby Dick's heart. So I headed back to Nantucket looking for a new ship and wealth-seeking sailors. And that, of course, is the answer to my question before. Which, which city are we in? We're in Nantucket, of course. All right, Nantucket, 1st January 1820. Um, I think this, was, this might be a good to place to stop this episode and... Um, since we went through the tutorial, we kind of got a feel of how this is going on. We still have... Oh, wow. So our ship has gone down. We have a new ship, the Melville, which is a rotten sloop. Oh, my goodness. So we have a little bit of money to improve it. But I think what we'll do is get on that in the next episode. So thank you so very much for joining me. I am really intrigued by this game. And um, I'm really interested to see what the next episode brings. So thank you again for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you next time.